Hello and welcome to episode 1 of my RuneScape tutorial Let's Play series. This first episode is just an introduction to the fantastic game that is RuneScape. RuneScape is not on Steam as of August 2018, but it can be played at www.runescape.com. From their webpage, click the Play Now button, then click Create Free Account. You will need a valid email address to create an account. I will put a link in uh, to their webpage and wiki in the description for this episode. RuneScape is free to play but is limited if you are not a subscriber. It costs £6.99 or $8.99 a month to subscribe. It was released in January 2001. It is developed by Jagx. Jagx. RuneScape is a fantasy MMORPG, which of course is massive multiplayer online role-playing game. A perfect mix of crafting and questing. RuneScape has had over 200 million accounts created and is recognised by the Guinness, Book, Guinness World Records as the world's largest and most updated free MMORPG, so it might take a while for you to get a name you desire. I have been playing RuneScape since 2003, on and off the last 15 years, which is why I thought I should share it with you. Okay, when you have created the free account, you should by all rights be on this screen. I will start this series as a free to play account to give you an idea of just how much you can do for free. You could in theory play for six months for free, you know, um, before things start to get a bit, I don't know. But my favourite skills are member skills, so after this episode I will subscribe and become a member. One last thing, you have seven days to validate your email address, uh, which is a very straightforward process. Okay, let's have some RuneScape fun. Okay, so now first of all we're going to create our character. So, and let's see, so you can do all your skin tones over here. There you go, and you can do your hair, so mine is dark brown, I'll call it willow brown because I do like cutting willow trees, and let's see, hairstyle, well you know what, I think that's about it, really, uh, let's just have a look to show you some of the hairstyles, uh, there's good choices, so we'll stick with that one because I want to get in and show you the game. Uh, right, next we go to choose a top. Well, I'm not really that fashion conscious. But again, to give you an idea what you can do. Oh, I like that, that's quite nice. Oh, that looks, oh, I don't know. There you go, that'll do. And, well, I don't actually have any facial hair, so let's just play. I thought I'd show all of that though, just for um, thoroughness. I know that some people who watch uh, these YouTube videos like to see the details, so there we go. Oh, so now it's asking me, have I played recently? Have I played before but not in a while? Have I never played before? Uh, I'm going to put I've played before but not in a while. Although I have been playing recently because I didn't want to come in like a complete idiot not knowing a single thing to do because so much has changed. RuneScape is like worm. It gets updated with some wonderful updates. So anyway, I'm going to choose this one. Okay, so this has started us in what you can call legacy mode. In uh, when RuneScape, when I first started playing in 2003, this was how all of the RuneScape game looked. It's it starts in legacy mode, and you'd have a round map, 
that you couldn't adjust. But for now, we're just going to go through this starter island, tutorial island, and then we will get into the game proper. But for now, let's just go through the tutorial. That gives you an idea then of what to do. Use the mouse wheel and the WASD or arrow keys to rotate the camera. Use the mouse wheel or page keys to zoom the camera. So there we go, very straightforward. I like using the middle mouse button. Swivel the screen around, you can zoom in and out. Yep, very straightforward, it's very easy, very simple. Okay, so left click the RuneScape guide it's telling us up here, so that's what I'm gonna do. Greetings, I see you are our new arrival to the world of Gillenor. I hope that's how you pronounce it. Gillenor? Oh, I don't know. My job is to welcome all new visitors to this land. So welcome. You have already learned the first thing needed to succeed in this world. Take talking to other people. Getting around is easy. Just point and click. Left click a destination to walk there. Left click a door to open it, right click to see all options. To continue, open that door over there. Oh, here's the map, mini map just popped up. So that's what I'm going to do, click on the door. Just simply left click, you can see the icon changes to a door icon. Now go outside and talk to your first instructor, the survival expert. Okay, now the main reason I love RuneScape is the crafting and it is just so much fun. As you're going to see, don't take my word for it, let's just see what happens. Okay, so here's the first instructor, survival expert. Notice this is progressing up here as we go along. Hello there, newcomer. My name is Brianna. I'm going to teach you about skills you'll need to survive. Oh, here's the skills window just popped up. You're going to see it as we go through the tutorial, all tons of stuff starts appearing. You have many skills you can train. I think there's 27 to be exact. Two, four, six, eight, nine. Yeah, so three rows, 27. Of course, some of them are member only skills. When you hover over them, it tells you there. Do you see members skill? And like I say, I love divination, and that's a members skill. I like. I like this is free Dungeoneering, that's my favourite out of all of them. But we're going to go through doing all of them, let's stick to the plot. The more you may, you have many skills you can train, the more you practice the better you get. Now remember with RuneScape, skills are tied to quests and quests are tied to skills. So some quests you can't do unless you've got 50 woodcutting or 10 in magic. Different uh, quests will require different skills. Some quests require no skills, but th they are so well interlinked, you will see. So let's click this. I'll tell you about woodcutting, fishing, and fire making, and cooking skills, and these are all very fun skills. Let's start with woodcutting. Chop a tree until you get some logs in your backpack. Okay, so. One thing that a tremendous change to RuneScape since its first release is now you have a tool belt where your tools are kept. So this valuable little bit of space, this is your inventory over here. You do not have a great deal of space. You have 28 slots in actual fact to be able to store items you get in the game. But fortunately they added a tool belt. Uh, some years ago and all your tools are now stored in that. How fantastic. So let's click the tree. You just simply left click, you see the icons of a tree, and we start chopping. Your character is now attempting to cut down the tree with the hatchet on your tool belt. So sit back and enjoy, enjoy I think it said. Right, you see we got a log, and it says you get some logs. Right, one is enough. Let's now go back and talk to these. Very good. Now let's put those logs to use. Light the logs in your backpack to make a fire. Okay, so I think I need to step back from the, let's try. So if I left click on the logs, after you leave Tutorial Island, you'll be able to use fletching skill to craft your own bows and arrows and trees. For now, right click the log and left click light. Okay, well once we're in the full game, we can just simply left click. But for now, I need to right click light logs. Oh, too close, yeah. So I need to stand back a bit. Let's go over here, right click light 
You, your, your character is now attempting to light the fire with the tinderbox on your tool belt. The higher your skill in fire making gets, the quicker you will be able to light logs. I was very lucky and that lit it quickly, but I guess that's because I'm in the tutorial and they speed things up. You managed to make a fire and earned experience in the fire making skill. Okay, let's talk to the instructor. Well done, you can cook food on a fire. If you're ever injured, eating food will restore your health. We need, we, we'll need something to cook. There are shrimps in the pond, so let's catch and cook some. Whenever you see bubbles on, in the water, there's probably some good fishing to be had there. Okay, depending on the area you're in is the type of fish you will catch. There is a very good wiki for RuneScape and it tells you the different places that you can catch the different fish. For now, let's stick to the plot. So I'm going to click, see the icons of a fish when I hover over the pond. So I'm going to left click. You see the bubbles on the water. Your character is now attempting to catch fish with a net on your tool belt. This should only take a few seconds. Notice I get experience. Whenever you do any skill successfully, like chop a log, fish, divination, or anything that you choose to do, you'll get experience and a little icon, circular icon at the top appears, showing you your progress to the next level up. Okay, I got a shrimp here. You catch some raw shrimps. So this is a raw shrimp. Talk to the instructor. Now you have caught some shrimp, let's cook it. You'll cook your shrimp on a fire. If your fire has gone out, chop a tree to get some logs and make a new fire. Then use your shrimp on the fire. Okay, so right, the fire's gone out, not a problem. We just chop another log. Because we love wood cutting. It's a fun skill. And it's my main way for making money. Oh, we're just going to make so much money, I'm going to show you. See, look at that. We got three quarters nearly of the way to a new wood cutting level. Right, I've got some logs. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to light this. You managed to light a fire. Yeah, I've read that all before. So now what do we do? We left click the shrimp. So it's gone to use mode and it's highlighted. And now we just left click the fire. How cool is that? How simple is that? You actually burn, you accidentally burn the shrimp. Yeah, well, we're using a campfire. If we're using a oven, we might have been more successful. Oh, you burnt your shrimp. Don't worry, that happens to everybody the first time. As you get more experienced in cooking, you'll burn food less often. Let's try again. First, fish some shrimp, then use them on a fire. If your fire's gone out, yeah, we know. So let's fish another shrimp. Fishing is another way you can use to get money with fishing lobsters. But I won't uh, comment any more on that because I do prefer a woodcutting method, which I am going to show. Right, we've got another shrimp. We're going to highlight it. Not the burnt one, the raw one. And left click the fire before it goes out. There you go, you successfully cooked the shrimp up there. You can see I've got some cooking experience and if you hover over it, it tells you your next level. So current XP 30. Right, let's click this. Okay, so I've got a shrimp there. Notice it heals me for 200 and says one constitution. I think that's the amount that I need constitution wise in order to eat the food. So I must have one constitution in order to eat this shrimp. I think that's the way it works. Let's talk to the instructor. Oh, well done. Now you have some food to eat whenever you feel poorly. I've taught you all I can about wood cutting, fire making and fishing. Open the gate, follow the path to the next area and talk to the master chef. He'll teach you more about cooking. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, left click the gate.
and we want that house there so I'm going to use the mini map you can left click in the mini map and then it will walk to that place how cool is that oh it does tell us here the mini map shows the area you're currently in left click on the mini map to travel to that location so yeah I always use the mini map for travel the nice thing is of course is you can resize it once you're in the main game so let's go in here and talk to the master chef welcome newcomer I am the master chef Lev I will teach you how to cook food truly fit for a king I already know how to cook Brianna just taught me ha you call that cooking you're much more likely to burn your food if you cook on a log fire in the open you should cook at a range whenever you can so he's talking about an oven a cooking range now I'm going to teach you the fine art of baking bread. The master chef gives you an empty bucket and a pot of flour. Fill the bucket with water from the sink, then use it to wet the flour into dough. Then bake the dough into bread on my range. Okay, so what he's just said to us to do is left click the bucket, left click the sink, See, you get water, you fill the bucket from the sink, then left click the bucket and left click it on the pot of flour. And there you go. You mix the water and flour to make some bread dough. And there we are. Now we need to cook it or bake it. So now there's the cook at range. So I can either left click on the dough and left click on the range or I can simply left click on the range so let's left click the range okay and you see it automatically highlights bread uh, down here it's telling us we need a cooking level of one which the tick tells us we've got and we need one bread dough which is telling us we've got up here it's telling us how much experience we're going to get for doing this so we're going to get 40 xp it's telling us the uh, if we want to sell this bread to a, a, a trader npc we will get seven gold it's telling us if we go to the grand exchange which is like a, a massive marketplace very simple i'm going to show you how to do all of that we can sell it for 805 gold although i can't imagine no or surely that's 80.5 anyway i can't imagine anyone in their right mind paying that much for a loaf of bread and lastly you can use it for alchemy its value is uh, if you transmute it to gold would be nine gold so slightly better than selling it at a shop anyway let's just blinking cook it so left click cook and away we go we got some XP for that and we got a loaf of bread notice it gives us healing of 200 as well right let's cook to the instruct uh, chef ah there's nothing like the smell of freshly baked bread I agree be sure to carry a little food with you on your adventures if you're injured in combat eating is the best way to feel better there are all sorts of food you can cook with the right ingredients and a high enough cooking skill pies cakes stews you can even turn churn cream and butter or brew your own mead see that's the thing i love about runescape is the level of, of crafting you can go into and all the combinations of different items you can do to create different items it truly is a marvel you'll be a master chef before you know it now go off to the next area with you now off to the next area with you oh he's shuffling me out right so let's click the door follow the path to the home of the quest guide okay so let's just click over here for now because I can't see it on the mini map anything blinking but you see the little arrow that blinks is showing me the way ah the pathing now has come up so okay remember once we get in the full game we can resize the mini map so I will show how to do that once we get in game because we're still on tutorial island which is considered legacy mode even though it shows us a path 
Right, so I'm going to click in this house because the door is open. And here's the instructor. Quest guide. Let's talk to him. Ah, welcome adventurer. I'm here to tell you all about quests. Let's start by opening the quest list. There you go, that's now appeared. A quest name is red if you have not started it. When you have started a quest, it will change to the color yellow to show its progress and to green when you've completed the quest. To find the start of a quest, look for the quest icon on your minimap. You usually start the quest by talking to someone nearby. So you see that little blue icon? That tells you it's a quest giver. So a quest NPC. Wherever that tiny little blue, but they are, it is small, but you can see it's a little blue icon. Quests can vary greatly from collecting beads to hunting down dragons. You'll have to experience the thrill of questing yourself to fully understand. And I will say, there are two things RuneScape excels in. One is crafting, and two is questing. So, let's have some fun. You may find some adventure in the cave under my house. Okay, so he's telling us to go down here, so let's do it. You just left click on the ladder, the icon is of an out ladder. Okay, right, now talk to the mining instructor. So you can see we're nearly halfway through. And I'm going to click in the mini map because it shows where he blinking is. Okay, let's talk to the mining instructor. Greetings, my name is Desik and I'm a miner by trade. On either side of me are rocks containing tin and copper ore. Mine one of each, we're going to smelt and smith a melee weapon for you. Just like Worm, I absolutely love the uh, mining and smithing in RuneScape. It is a lot of fun. So I'm going to switch this to the pocket so you can see me getting the resources. I'm going to drop the shrimp, the burnt shrimp, because it's not worth anything. You can't sell it. So I'm going to drop that. I'm going to left click on a, mine, a copper deposit. It says I'm attempting to mine. You start with a bronze pickaxe, by the way, which is the slowest pickaxe. As you level up in smithing, uh, in sorry in mining you will be able to use better pickaxes which I will show okay so I've got some copper now we want some tin okay I've got some tin you can see over here now copper and tin ore. now let's talk to the instructor you show the mining instructor the tin ore and copper ore you mined. Great, a bronze pickaxe is the most inefficient pickaxe available, but it's perfect for a beginner. The better the pickaxe you use, the faster you will get ore from the rock you're mining. Also, the better the pickaxe, the higher the mining level you will require, require to wield it. So why do I want to mine ore? You can use your smithing skill to smelt ore into metal bars at a furnace. Then at an anvil, you smith the bars into melee weapons and armour worn by warriors. Furnaces are expensive to build and maintain, so there are not that many scattered around the world. I suggest when you find a furnace, you remember its location for future use. You can smelt tin and copper together to make bronze equipment. Simply take the ores required to make a metal to a furnace, then use the ores on the furnace to smelt them in to a bar of metal. Okay, so let's just do that. We we'll click the furnace. Same as the cooking. Over here it's selected for us what we have the materials for. Down here you can see it. we're using one of each copper and tin. Uh, we're going to get 6.2 XP, smithing experience, not mining, so always remember that, and it's not worth anything. Let's just smith it. And it'll automatically turn both of them into a bronze bar. You smelt the copper into a bronze bar, copper and tin into bronze. Okay, we'll talk to the instructor. 
<clears throat> so how do I make a weapon out of bronze bar? When you use a metal bar on an anvil, you choose the item you want to smith. As long as you have a high enough smithing level and the correct number of bars, the higher your smithing level, the better quality of the metal you can work. You start off on bronze and work your way up as your smithing skill increases. Start by smithing a bronze dagger at the anvil. So let's do that. We left click the anvil. And it selected the bronze dagger for us. So we're going to click smith. See, we got some smithing experience up there. You smith a bronze bar into a dagger, and there's the dagger. Let's talk to the instructor. I'm hoping to get all this tutorial island into this first episode, by the way. Now that you have a melee weapon, you're ready to learn about combat. Okay, so open the gate. That's what we got to do. We're going to a combat instructor now. Who's over here? To talk to him. Hi, my name is Gamester. For life. To me, you're just another newcomer who thinks they're ready to fight. I am Vanaka, the greatest swordsman alive. He likes to brag, doesn't he? You'll do barely any damage with your bare hands. Let's start by wielding that butter knife you're carrying. Left click the bronze dagger in your backpack to wield it. Okay, so we go to backpack, we left click the dagger, and it automatically wields it. Right click the combat settings cog on your action bar and choose setup action bar to fill your action bar with abilities you've unlocked. Abilities in the gold rectangle on your action bar are automatically used in combat. So, it wants us to click on the cog. Oh right, okay, so it's just mentioning that, it doesn't actually want us to do it. Oh no, wait a minute, let's try again, I may have needed to right click. Ah oh, yeah, so I'm going to go for combat mode revolution, which basically means it's going to do all the skills for me and everything. I'm lazy, yes I know. Oh no, set up action bar, so I'm going to need to follow that through. So let's set up action bar. Now you're ready for combat, attack a rat. You'll continue to fight each other until it's dead or you do something else. Right, so let's walk around here and get inside this cage. Oh, the door's open. So now we just simply need to left click on a rat and it will attack. And down here you can see it's cycling through the skills. Now you can set it to manual where you can choose each skill you want to use. Um, but it's just simpler to let it do it automatically. Here you can see a yellow bar filling up. That's basically um, a, a power that once it gets up increases enough it opens up higher skills that you can then use or cast if you like um, so the more power you have in that yellow bar the stronger the skills you can use anyway we killed the rat we got some bones let's grab the bones let's go back to the instructor and talk to him well done, you've defeated your first monster. There's a lot more to combat, including the range and magic skills. When you get to the mainland, you should check out the Combat Academy in Lumbridge. The Combat Academy is north of Lumbridge Lodestone, near the General Store. There are lessons about ranged combat, casting magic spells, the combat triangle, managing adrenaline, which was what that yellow bar was, and more. For now, you've finished in the cave, return to the surface and continue your adventure. Right, thank you. Okay, so let's click there in the minimap. And we're going to click this ladder. If I can get the ladder. There you go. Right, so let's continue. Ah, oh, so it wants me to go in there now. I think this is a bank. Let's talk to, ah oh yeah, talk to financial advisor. 
Money is useful because you can buy items from the Grand Exchange if you don't want to craft them yourself. Gold coins are the currency of the human kingdoms. Your coins are kept in your money pouch at the bottom of your backpack. You currently have zero coins. I'm poor. There are three basic ways to make money. Skilling, combat and trading. Some people have work for an adventurer. Oh no, look, there's the time. I'm going to carry on though because I want to fit all of this into the first episode. For an adventurer like you, you will reward and will reward you for completing the quest. Yes, yeah, so you can get quests to make money as well. Many enemies will drop items when they die. You can sell them to a general store or on the Grand Exchange in Varrock. So either to a general store, NPC, you'll get hardly any money, or to another player, and they will pay you quite a bit more. By getting a high level in skills such as cooking, mining, smithing or fishing, you can create or gather your own items and sell them for pure profit. You can only carry so many items in your backpack, 28 I think we've already discussed. You can deposit items you want to keep and not sell in your bank. Okay, so access your bank, deposit items if you wish, then close it. So we left click the bank booth and it opens up the bank for us. So if I want to bank something, let's bank the bones, let's bank the bucket and the food. And there we go. Right, you've nearly finished. The, the prayer instructor would like to have a chat with you in the nearby church. Okay, so let's go and say a prayer, because I probably need to. Right, so I've got to go over here to the church. Talk to the prayer instructor. Good day, brother. My name's Gamester for life. Hello, Gamester. I'm Brother Brace. I'm here to tell you all about prayer. This is your prayer list. Prayer boosts your effectiveness in combat. As you increase your level in the prayer skill, you'll unlock more prayers. Click the prayer you wish to use to activate it and click it again to deactivate. As you can see there's lots of prayers but we can't cast any of them because we'd need 40 uh, skill level in prayers to do that one. So probably the first one's the only one we can do, fix skin. Active prayers will drain your prayer points. Your, you recharge your prayer points by praying at an altar, usually found in a church. How convenient. There's the prayer. 10 points I have at the moment. As you level up, you will get more prayer points, so therefore you'll be able to cast uh, bigger prayers. Okay. Most enemies will drop bones when defeated. Pick up and bury the bones to earn prayer experience. Um, if they're ordinary bones, I would say yes, but if you want to get into one of the skills uh, summoning, that uses bones for summoning, so just be aware of that. If it's just basic bones, then bury them. I'm also the community officer around here, so it's my job to tell you about your friends and ignore lists. You can add people to your friends list by clicking the add friend button, then typing their name into the box that appears. If you add someone to your ignore list, they will not be able to talk to you or send any form of message to you. So it's talking about down here. So there we have add friend. Uh, that's okay that. Are there rules for how I should behave? Yes, in general, always try to be court courteous, courteous, I should say, to others. Remember that adventurers like yourself are real people with real feelings. If you go around being abusive or causing trouble, you could end up in trouble. To get the trouble, why would you want to go and upset other people? I should hope you wouldn't. I'll keep that in mind. Peace be with you, my child. Okay, so he's finished with us. Let's click the door. We're nearly done. Look at that, 91%. Okay, we've got to go over this way. Notice if you click on the mini-map and it's inaccessible, it will automatically put the pointer to the nearest place possible. So that's really handy. 
Uh, if you're clicking on a building and the door is shut, it will put you outside the door. Okay, right, time to talk to the magic instructor. Good day, newcomer. Your journey is nearly at its end. Oh, if only it was. My name is Tarova. Before you leave the mainland, I'm going to tell you a little about magic. Let's start by opening your spellbook. Okay, here's the spell book. This is a list of your spells. Casting spells increases your magic skill and consumes runes, which you carry in your backpack. You create runes with the rune crafting skill. With a low mag magic level, you can cast only the simplest spells, such as airstrike. You must wield a magic weapon to cast combat spells. You'll begin your adventure in Lumbridge. Lumbridge is a quaint, welcoming town in the Kingdom of Mist Halen. I suggest you complete the Blood Pack quest in Lumbridge. It will reward you with melee ranged and magic weapons. Speak to Xenia in the Lumbridge Cemetery to begin. I'm going to deactivate the protective spells around this island so you can home teleport to Rumbridge, Lumbridge using the lodestone network. If you ever get lost, you can freely teleport to a lodestone you have discovered. You'll have a mentor when you arrive in Lumbridge to help you on your first few adventures. He's a dwarf called Gudric, who lives in Taverley. Should you need guidance, you'll be able to contact your mentor. And there we go. Use your home teleport spell to travel to the Lumbridge Lodestone. And an option there to contact the mentor. Click here to open the Lodestone map. So basically the Lodestone is your teleports. It's how you're going to get around the world of RuneScape. But you have to discover some of the uh, teleports in order to use them. If I left click this... It then brings up the world map and of course it's telling us here Lumbridge. That's where we start. That's where we all started in 2003 and 2001. It all began in Lumbridge. Well, you started on Tutorial Island and then you would go to Lumbridge. So let's do that. Okay, now depending on the quality of the settings that you've chosen is how long it could take to load this first little bit. Oh, I just completed a uh, an achievement. Was it an achievement? Congratulations, you've completed... Oh no, this, it was a quest. There's no place like home. Yes. So that's completed. So here's where you start in Lumbridge. Now I need to end this episode, but I did want to quickly mention about the free-to-play side of it. So if we hover over the rest here, you can see that's free-to-play skill. Strength's a free-to-play skill. Defense is a free-to-play. Ranged is free-to-play. Prayer is free-to-play. Magic's free-to-play. Runecrafting's free-to-play. Construction is a members only. Dungeoneering's free-to-play. Constitution. So you can see here there's too many and it takes too long to read them all but there's lots of skills that you can use. You can now see why I said to you at the beginning you can easily play this for six months in free to play mode. However I want to show all that RuneScape has to offer, all that I can, why I love playing RuneScape, why I enjoy it so much. Um, I've just logged in so it will be a little tiny laggy but anyway so there we go. The next episode I'm going to be a member. I'm going to get sub subscribed so I can show you RuneScape in its true glory. Wherever you are in the world, God bless you and keep you safe. Thank you for watching and have a fantastic day. Goodbye.